So this is a Buccaneer schooner. Just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, you've got your jockey wheel, hitch, and handbrake. We'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker, you have your gas bottle tie downs, and you also have a gas changeover valve, which I'll explain in a moment. But you can carry a maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles at any point. In the front locker, you will see that you have the gas uh, pipe work coming down to the gas bottle itself, and on top of the bottle, you have your gas on off valve. Gas open is gas on, and gas close is gas off. The pipe work that goes into the front of the bottle is a reverse thread fitment, so you need to turn it the opposite direction to a bottle lid, for instance, to release it from the caravan. Like I said, you can have two gas bottles connected on this regulator at any point, and you'll notice there's an arrow on the left-hand side here pointing towards the pipe work just here, but you can turn this valve over, so you can have it connected to this bottle if you wanted to. Um, but like I said, you need a second piece of pipe work for that and a second bottle to allow that to work. Coming down the off side of the caravan, you've got your Audi heating and hot water flue. That is very simply there to allow the heating system to breathe. You've then got your water pump. So your water pump drops down inside the act roll. As you can see here, it needs to be fully submerged in the water tank prior to filling the water system up. The water pump connection inside the van pushes in, as you can see here, and then you lock it in place to lock the pump in position. Coming down the rest of the side of the van, you have your shower connection, so you can actually have a dog shower on the outside of the van, should you wish to. You've then got your battery locker with your mains power lead coming into the side of the van. Um, that connects to the, directly to the power on site and a 110 amp leisure battery in the side there. You've then got your uh, storage locker from the outside of the van, so you can open that up and you can put your spare uh, accessories in there, should you wish to. We've then got the single axle motor mover, so we'll demonstrate that to you when you're here on site. And we'll also torque the wheel nuts to the correct setting, so you can see everything is working correctly, motor move wise, and you can see the wheel nuts are tight. Coming a little bit further down the side of the van, you've got your wastewater connections, so you've got your fresh water that goes in the front of the van, and the wastewater that comes out down the side here. The two large diameter holes will receive the grey waste pipes, and they'll drop down inside the waste master. You've then got your toilet flush tank at the back of the van, or your toilet waste tank at the back of the van. You'll open this up, and in here there'll be a cassette. So as you can see, you've got your toilet waste cassette. You pull up the orange handle and pull the cassette towards you to tip the waste away. The orange neck here turns out 90 degrees, so you can tip the waste away. The grey cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. And then you've got your orange pressure relief button on the back of the cassette, so you can tip the waste away. Uh, so you press that button in and tip the waste away without it spitting and spluttering back at you. On the back of the van, you'll see that you've got the automatic legs on the back or um, self-leveling legs on the back of the van we'll demonstrate that to you in a moment we've then got the storage locker for underneath the bed at the rear of the caravan your two fridge vents which are very simply there to allow the hot air at the back of the fridge unit and to take some cool air in behind one of those you'll also find a gas flue for when the fridge is running on gas we've then got a storage locker for underneath the front seating area and a barbecue gas point at the front of the van going on to the inside now as you come in the door on the right left hand side you've got your main power switch for the whole caravan on this switch on the end here you've then got your lighting for around the caravan as you come around the switches these two here will be for the external lights um, so you'll have an external light at the front of the van or oh, sorry side of the van above the door and you'll also have one at the front of the caravan on the a-frame itself you then got your water pump runs which we'll come back to in a moment volt meter for the battery on board the caravan and the onboard water level for the water storage tank underneath the bed at the back of the caravan. Above that, you've got your Aldi heating and hot water, which again, we'll come back to in a moment. Now, the first thing you're gonna do when you've got the main power turned on on the switch in the end, is you're gonna have the Aldi control panel turned off because there's no water in the system when you initially turn the caravan on. You're gonna open all the taps up on the hot side of the water system with your water pumps turned off. You're then going to come underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the caravan. Now first of all I'm going to demonstrate how to fill the water system directly to the hot water tank in the front of the caravan here that you'll see underneath the front seating area. So you're going to need to make sure that the yellow valve underneath the, sheet, uh, the seat is parallel with the floor, so as it is at the moment. If that valve is upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat, then all the water will drain back out onto the floor underneath the van. So you put that valve fl flat with the floor. Once you've got that valve flat with the floor, 
you come over to your control uh, over to your control panel with your tap switch on you'll then have this uh, the right hand switch in the internal position and you'll hit the uh, sorry external position and then that will start allowing the water system to run directly from the ac, uh, ac roll on the outside of the caravan directly into the hot water tank and out of every tap on board the caravan. Now this does take a few moments to fill the system up, but once the system is full, you'll have water running out of every tap continuously on board the caravan. So once the water system is full, as I said, you'll have water running out of every tap continuously on board the caravan. Once the water system is completely full, you put the switch back into the central position here, when it clears up, central position here, and the water system should carry on running. If the water system doesn't continue to run, you'll run it from the internal, uh, external pump, sorry, from the outside of the caravan, directly to the taps on board the caravan. You've got a level here that tells you how much water you've got in the onboard water tank. When that water tank has water in it, it'll come up on here. And then once that water system is full, uh, to the hot water tank in the front of the caravan here. You can also fill the tank at the back of the caravan. So on the right hand side, oh sorry, left hand side of this tank, right at the back of the tank, you'll see this blue valve. When the blue valve is in the position it's in now, that will allow you to fill this tank up. And if it's turned over so that big, uh, the ball part of the uh, valve is turned the opposite way, so it's pointing towards the outside of the caravan, it will drain this tank down completely. So once you've got them water systems full, you can come over to the main control panel for the already heating and hot water. Turn the control panel on. And as you see on here, you have a pump, so the heating is running, as you can see here. You've then got a indicator, say so you've got mains power coming into the caravan. And at the bottom here, you've got the current room temperature with we'll the menu button. And it will take you into the options for the heating and hot water. So you've got minus or plus for your room heating. If it's at five degrees, then the heating is completely turned off. So let's turn that all the way down for a moment. Don't think we need it on today. Sometimes it's easier if you press the button as we are now, rather than holding the button down. Below that, you have the water temperature. So you've got hot water on and hot water boost when you're showering on board the van. So when the bar's halfway up, that's hot water on. So essentially, it just warms up at a steady, at a steady speed. However, if you've got it on boost, so it's completely full here, it will warm up quickly. Um, you'll obviously need it on boost when you're showering on board the van. Below that then, you have your mains power coming into the caravan. So you've got one, two or three kilowatts of heating coming into the van. One kilowatt is what we can run the van on here on site. If you have it on two or three kilowatts, you would need to make sure you have the correct power supply coming into the caravan from the site you're on. But if you ask your site office when you arrive on your holiday, they will be able to advise this. Bottom left hand side of the screen, you've got your option to run gas. If the gas is turned on the front locker, then the boiler will ignite on gas. You can run it as a combination of one and one kilowatt, two kilowatts, or three kilowatt with the gas. However, you'd normally just use the gas when you're off grid. If it fails to ignite, it'll actually come up with gas fail at the bottom of the screen with two exclamation marks at either side. In the control panel here, you have got some advanced settings for when you run uh, for uh, heating and hot water control, um, manual time or automatic timers, etc. We do advise for this you read the manual and understand the manual fully before you start playing with the options in this control panel. Next up, we're going to go to the fridge. The fridge is very simple to use. You've got main power on for the fridge on the button here on the left hand side. Gas, the fridge will self ignite on gas as long as the gas is turned on. If it fails to ignite, it will flash the red light on this side and it will also flash the blue flame symbol here. If it ignites on gas, this blue flame symbol will stay lit up on its own. To go to mains, you'll press the, the plug symbol here, and that is 240 mains coming into the fridge from the site you are on. To control the temperature on mains or gas, you've got the temperature control button on the right hand side here. The next button you see here is 12 volt power from the car you are towing with. You would need to make sure you have the correct power supply or the connect, correct connection on the car you are towing with for this to operate correctly. If you don't, then it will not operate as a call box while you are traveling down the road. Like I said, if the connections aren't there on the car or the correct connections, then it won't operate and it will make this bleeping noise and it will also flash the blue symbol here. The microwave is an eco microwave, so you need to hit the eco button for the microwave to wake up, as you can see there. Uh, it will time itself out after a short while um, 
and like I said, you just need to turn it back on with the eco button just on the right hand side here. The rest of it operates like a household microwave. Do advise when you're traveling, or you do need to when you're traveling, sorry, remove the microwave plate from inside the microwave. Hob, grill and oven all works very much like your household appliances. The only difference being, if you're not on 240 mains, you will have no electric ring here at the back of the oven. The igniters, etc., on the hob work with the uh, 12 volt power on board the van. Coming into the back of the caravan now. You've got an electric flush on the toilet, which you hit the button here to flush the toilet. You've got a red indicator light that illuminates red when the toilet waste set is completely full. The toilet seat itself turns to your convenience, as you can see here. However, when you're removing the toilet set from underneath the van, you do need to make sure this toilet's in the straight on position. And then you have your grey waste handle, which allows the toilet waste into the cassette under the van. Again, when you are removing that cassette, this toilet flap needs to be back in the central position. If that flap isn't in the central position, then it will not allow you to remove the toilet waste cassette from the side of the van. Just going to come up to the front of the van now and show you where the main trip switches are for the caravan. So underneath the seat on the front right hand side of the van, you'll see at the top here you have your 240 trip switches. You need to hit the test switch here to make sure you've got mains power coming to the caravan. If this switch drops down as it has done now, it means there is mains power coming to the caravan. If you hit that test switch and it doesn't drop down, it means there is no mains power coming to the caravan at all. Each of the 240 trip switches is marked below to tell you what each of the four, each of those are for, the same as the 12 volt fuse at the bottom here, and there is a guide to what each fuse should be in each of those connections. One last thing I'm just gonna walk you through is the self-leveling. So to operate the self-leveling, you need to hit the power button here, on the top right hand side. To get the legs to come up, you'll press the button at the bottom here and it will track the legs up to the bottom of the caravan. And when you arrive on site and you're setting the caravan up, you'll need to press the down button here and it will allow the legs to go down on the caravan. One thing you need to remember is the front of the caravan needs to be pointing down from the back end of the caravan. So the A-frame at the front of the van will need to be pointing down slightly for the self-leveling to operate. If the let van isn't low enough at the front, then it will actually bleep at you, the control panel inside here, and it will flash a warning light on here, which shows the front of the caravan. And it just means you need to drop the nose a little bit more. You can individually adjust each leg, which you shouldn't ever need to do, because it should operate as it should. And the green light here in the center indicates that the van is completely level. So that is the Buccaneer Schooner. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'll be more than happy to help. We appreciate the business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon. Thank you again. Bye-bye.